The pessimists will tell you that now is the time to get out. You'd be a fool to start investing your hard-earned dollars in the stock market, or property, or mutual funds. A recession is just around the corner. The global markets will crash anytime soon. You should be buying bonds, or gold, or locking your money away in the bank in a term deposit. But whatever you do, don't invest. You'll certainly lose all your money because soon, the economy will collapse. The greatest depression the world has ever seen is fast approaching. Sound familiar? Doom and gloom headlines are all the rage of late. Global recession fear is suddenly stalking the credit market. The economy is at risk of a doozy recession. Credit markets fearful of impending global recession. Forget Brexit, here are the signs that we're on the brink of the next global economic recession. Economic crisis can trigger World War III. Yes, we're all doomed. Every media outlet has become a platform for predictions of imminent economic and societal collapse. As I've often said, negative news gets more views. For our own survival, we're biologically hardwired to focus on the negative. When there was news of a tiger approaching our village, we took immediate action. We didn't have the luxuries of smartphones, or aeroplanes, or even agriculture. It made sense for us to be anxious all the time. Fast forward to the present day, and despite us having all these luxuries and living in the safest period of human history, we're still biologically hardwired to have feelings of being overwhelmed anxious, and worried. In the early days, these feelings were preferable to the alternative, being killed. So back to investing. What hope do we have? When should we invest our money? Is there ever a good time? Well, back in 2010, there were predictions of a double-dip recession. Did it happen? Nope. In November and December last year, there were calls to get out of Dodge and flee the Australian share market. But now the ASX is at a four-month high. Oops, lucky we didn't take that advice. Professor Steve Keen famously lost a bet on house prices back in 2010, where he had to climb Australia's highest mountain, Mount Kosciuszko. He predicted that house prices would fall by a staggering 40%. He was so sure about the upcoming crash, he sold his inner-city Sydney apartment for $526,000. Of course, the crash never happened. Over 11 years, at an annualised 8.7% increase over the last decade, the property would be valued at approximately $1.3 million today. If Steve was right, and the property market did crash by 40%, his apartment would only be worth about $315,000. So for him to finally be correct, he needs the property market to crash by about 75%. Obviously, it's not going to happen. I don't mean to poke fun at Professor Keane. He's actually very smart and gives us a lot of good insight into the economy and the risks we face. I've seen a lot of his videos and quite enjoy his commentary. We need people like him to offer a counterpoint to the popular view. However, there is a problem with conflating risks with predictions. He was right that Sydney property prices were too high. He was also right that the current falls in property prices were inevitable. But what he was wrong about was the timing. If anybody followed his advice and acted on his predictions, they would certainly have lost a lot of potential income. And that's the thing with predictions. They're notoriously wrong. Australian house prices were going to crash post-GFC. Greece was going to withdraw from the Eurozone, sending the world into a depression. The Chinese economy was going to face a hard landing and destroy the global economy. The United States quantitative easing program was going to cause hyperinflation. Brexit was going to destroy international trade. The election of President Trump was going to send the world economy into a death spiral. And this year, property prices are going to crash by 50% and Australia will fall into a recession for the first time in 27 years. The list of predictions of doom and gloom are endless. If you listen to all of them, you would never invest in anything. And that's the problem. People incorrectly confuse risks with inevitabilities. If there was no risk, then there would be no returns. Yes, some of those predictions could have been correct. Australian house prices could have crashed post-GFC. China could have had a hard landing. President Trump may have destroyed the American economy. 
But none of those things came true. And that's the biggest problem. Headlines scare people away from investing. I used to be scared. I used to go around telling people never to invest in the stock market. I used to tell people that investing in property is a mug's game. But I was wrong. I was just spurting out all the negative headlines that I had heard. A sensible person will hear these headlines and do the rational thing. That is, they will not invest. At least, not now. It would be better to wait for more calmer times when the financial outlook is a lot clearer. Which is? Never. Outlooks are never clear. There is never a good time to invest. There will always be negative news. There will always be predictions of the next economic crash and societal collapse. The media make money from negative news because we're biologically hardwired to listen. Negative news gets more views. The question remains, what should investors do? Of course, I'd love to be able to predict the bottoms of the troughs and the tops of the peaks. I'd be a millionaire. No, I'd be a billionaire. But realistically, I know that I can't. And I know that nobody can. Predictions are just that. Predictions. Nobody can reliably predict the ups and downs of the stock market. So my advice, stop trying. Stop trying to time the market. Stop trying to find the right prognosticators who will tell you when to buy and when to sell. Ultimately, given enough time, stock markets go up. This is due to rising populations, growing productivity, increasing technological output, and the refinement of rules and regulations to keep capitalism in check. Despite all the recessions, despite the Great Depression, despite all the financial crises, stock markets inevitably climb upwards. They have steadily risen at an average of 10% annually. Yes, some years markets will fall. Yes, some years markets will crash. But ultimately, they'll climb higher and higher. Over time, it's in your best interest to remain invested. Timing the market is a waste of time. Listening to the naysayers is an exercise in futility. You have to be strong and resist the temptation to sell, because more often than not, you will be wrong. I don't know when the next recession will be. I don't know when the markets will fall, nor how long they will rise before the next drop. I don't know how much they will fall by, nor for how long. Nobody knows. Anybody who says they do know is lying. I can only tell you what happened yesterday or the day before. Making predictions and listening to predictions is a fool's errand. Yes, occasionally by chance, a naysayer will get it right. They'll be plastered all over the media with their obligatory, I told you so. But on average, they will be wrong. By not investing, you're betting against a rising tide. Markets tend to steadily go up over time. For your information, the share market tends to go up more than the property market. Yes, you can stick your money in the bank and get a meager return every year. And once every so often you can gloat to your friends, See, I told you so. Cash had the best return this year. But by doing so, you're missing out on potentially big returns. I invest in the stock market by investing in ETFs. At the moment, I have 35% in Vanguard's VAS and 65% in VESG. They've been performing well, and I'm happy. You could forever play it safe and never invest your money. I did it myself for a long time. But you're setting yourself up for a guaranteed result. Meager returns. Ordentes fortuna juvat. Fortune favours the brave. You have to be brave to invest. You have to force yourself not to sell. You have to go against the common opinion. You have to put up with people telling you that the stock market will crash anytime soon. So going back to the original question, when is the right time to invest? It's always the right time. Never listen to the pessimists. Never listen to the naysayers. If you do, you may as well give up on investing right now.